In the world of martial arts there are few styles that capture the imagination in the way that the animal styles do. Even though these systems are famous, and often commonly practiced in Gong Fu, they are commonly misunderstood and misrepresented. In this article one hope to shed some light on the animal styles themselves and their relevance to modern training. Common Myths About the Animal Styles In martial arts today there are a lot of misconceptions about the animal styles, some of which we should address before we move on. Common myth 1, animal styles are just for show and have no real function. When you look at the vast majority of animal stylists around today it isn't hard to believe this one. Animal styles were developed to emphasize groups of similar concepts and so the imitative actions of the styles seek to bring out the functionality. Unfortunately, many practitioners get so caught up in trying to be an animal that they forget why they were there in the first place. Common myth 2, animal styles are about hand positions. Often the depth of many practitioners stops at the formation of the hand position. I have heard instructors tell students that the tiger style is the tiger claw and that the crane style is all about using the beak hand. If you believe that then I suppose it becomes true, but in my experience this is not the case. There are many animal styles that don't contain any signature hand techniques at all. There are complete systems of tiger boxing that don't use the claw at all, and crane styles that almost never use a beak are quite common but often go unnoticed because they don't look the part. Common Myth 3, Animal Styles were created by Bodhidharma at Shaolin Temple. This is complete rubbish and unfortunately it is Shaolin Temple that seems to be spreading it around. If you see any of the traveling monk shows or watch any of the Shaolin documentaries that have been produced in the last couple of years, you will see this myth being pushed very strongly. The modern animal styles that are coming out of temple are not classical styles. They are full of acrobatics and generally running around and pretending to be an animal, but with very little real functionality except marketing. Martial arts evolve, and the current commonly practiced Shaolin animal styles are valid in context, but to pretend that all of the martial arts that we see in Shaolin today were developed by Da Mo is ridiculous. If nothing else, Da Mo Bodhidharma, lived more than a thousand years before the first Shaolin animal form was built. This myth discredits the countless masters who made outstanding contributions to Shaolin Gong Fu over the 1,500 plus years of Shaolin's history. So what are the animal styles? The animal styles are more correctly known as the imitative styles Xing Quan, and are a unique feature of classical Chinese martial arts. Masters developed these styles as a way of exploring the nature of human consciousness by exploring the different minds that the animals represent. The animal is an archetype that the practitioner can explore to understand the changeability of the human mind. The purpose of imitating is to free ourselves from our everyday identity and thereby explore ways of thinking that we wouldn't have normally considered. This creates a paradigm shift and expands our understanding and our barriers accordingly. The first imitative system was not martial at all but was developed for health prevention. The Wu Xing Shi five animal frolics were developed by Hua Tuo, and by using the imitative actions of the tiger, bear, deer, ape and bird, the natural health systems of the body can be regulated and balanced. These exercises were popular for health but did not directly inspire the development of animal imitation systems. In the 1600s a Shaolin master, Bai Yu Feng, set out to revitalize the Shaolin system. He traveled around China for three years meeting with masters and learning a variety of styles. After the three years he returned to Shaolin and constructed a new style by combining five systems he had encountered in his travels. This new style was the Shaolin Five Animal Fist, Shaolin Wu Xing Quan. Shaolin Five Animals Shaolin Wu Xing Quan contains five distinct imitations, tiger, crane, snake, leopard and dragon. Each of these styles had existed before this form, but it was Bai Yu Feng who combined them into a single style in which each animal complemented the other. There had been records of animal boxing for centuries before Bai Yu Feng, but it was scattered examples and none had captured the imagination as this style had. 
Each of these animals will be explored in detail in later articles but I wanted to mention another version of Bai Yu Feng's boxing, Wu Xing Ba Fa Quan. Wu Xing Ba Fa Quan means the eight laws of five animals boxing and as a summary form of Bai Yu Feng's original style. In Wu Xing Ba Fa Quan the varying aspects of the system help to develop the practitioner so as to improve all of their gong fu. In this form the exercises of the tiger develop muscular strength and help increase bone density. The crane develops jing manifested qi, while the snake develops the smooth control of qi itself. The leopard develops speed and power, and the dragon develops the ability to hold still. All this is possible because of the proper application of the ba fa or eight laws. The eight laws are Correct use of the internal skills Correct use of external skills Correct application of mind Development of the six harmonies through the hands Development of the six harmonies through the legs and footwork Correct application of the three zones of the body Correct application of Qin Na functionality Correct development of Qi Gong Although some historians believe that Bai Yu Feng's style was originally called Wu Xing Ba Fa Quan, the versions that are most commonly practiced in Shaolin today are only variations on the summary form. After Bai Yu Feng, after Bai Yu Feng, imitative styles became very popular and many different imitations started to appear. Apart from the original five animals of tiger, crane, leopard, dragon and snake there are many others including the mantis, eagle, monkey, drunkard, white ape, dog, phoenix, elephant, lion, swallow, hawk, rooster, duck, fish, turtle, toad, scorpion and many more. Some animals became so popular that they developed into unique systems while many others survive as just a few techniques such as the vulture. As the concept of imitative practice spread, whole systems of exercise as well as weapon styles, such as monkey pole and drunken sword, started to appear. Through cinema they remain popular to this day. Imitative styles are popular in Shan Men Shaolin Quan and there are many imitative routines in the curriculum. Students start to learn Wu Xing Ba Fa Quan at level 6 Purple Sash. The old master, Lao Tzu, would tell you, if you do not change direction, you may end up where you are heading. It's just the kind of blatantly self-evident yet infuriatingly useless remark you would expect from a water buffalo riding Taoist. Unhelpful, that is, until you realize that you really have no clue where you are heading. Most of us don't. We keep being assaulted by the most surprising difficulties and winding up in situations we never even remotely desired, all without ever looking down to see that our feet are still hopping merrily along toward that dreadful house three blocks over and four miles south of the one we wanted to enter in the first place. A master, on the other hand, or teacher or mentor or friend or whatever you'd like to call them, can see exactly where we are headed. What is completely beyond our perception is perfectly obvious to him or her. And a good master can give you the courage to wake up, see what is happening, and make those terrifying course corrections that take you where you want to be instead of where your feet are going. This is just as true in Kung Fu as it is in any other area of life. You simply cannot make significant progress as a martial artist, or sometimes even know what progress is, without the experienced and keen eyesight of someone who has successfully navigated that stretch of road before and who also isn't blinded by the enchanting spell of your own life story, those crazy tales you've created about what is not possible. Consider Chua Min. As an orphaned beggar, watching street performers show off their martial skill was his sole escape from the daily humiliation and pain of either going without food or eating someone else's leftovers. So he would sit for hours, mesmerized by the effortless dance of spear tassels and flashing swords. He used to thrill at the matchless skill of the rope dart master who could weave his body in and around his weapon with the ease of a snake and still strike at impossible angles with the accuracy and power of an eagle. Some days he felt so inspired by their performance that he would sneak quietly off to the side and courageously begin reenacting their tremendous feats, usually with rather painful and embarrassing results. One performer took interest in the boy's exuberant, if unskilled, attempts and finally called him over. Do you really want to learn martial arts? He asked. Yes, sir. Very much. Then forget about us. Go to Shaolin Temple. 
A look of despair instinctively crossed the boy's face as he considered the vast distance between him and the temple, to say nothing of the mountains, the treacherous roads, and the money needed to get there. But it's so far. Is it? came the reply. And with that, the man smiled, turned on his heel, and walked away. Chua Min was dumbfounded. Instead of a long desired lesson, he got an annoying two-word question. And he stood there a long time before finally realizing that the only real obstacles in his path were not made of miles or mountains or dirt or gold, but of fear and hesitation and uncertainty. That thought brought a smile to his face, and then he, too, turned on his heel and began walking. Without that single piece of clear-sighted guidance from a street performer turned teacher, not to mention the ensuing years of careful instruction from his Shaolin master, Chua Min might never have become the smiling monk who overcame an army with two pairs of chopsticks. Not because he lacked the capacity, but because he couldn't see where he was going. None of us can. Not all the time, anyway. And a DVD doesn't have eyes. So find a teacher, one you can trust. We need teachers, if for no other reason than to respond with an is it to our but it's so far. Shaolin is one of the oldest martial arts on the planet. It was brought from India by a fellow named Bodhidharma, and has been credited with being inspirational to martial artists the world over. Interestingly, Shaolin eventually became an internal style of martial art atop Wooden Mountain. I know there will be those who disagree with the concept I present here, but I hold to it, as I have watched students evolve, and the evolution of art from Shaolin to Wooden mirrors what I have seen students go through on a personal level. Indeed, as students peel layers off the art, so do they add layers of awareness within themselves, and attain the truly miraculous. The student new to Shaolin learns to explode energy from the Tan Tan, to spread that energy throughout his frame and make his body like a rock. Arms become iron windmills, stances attach him permanently to the planet. This, however, is all based on exploding energy within the the body. As a student progresses through varieties of art he may encounter the concept of absorbing energy. The physical act of guiding a punch, instead of blocking it, mirrors the concept of drawing energy in, instead of just expelling it. This progression of art is often from Shaolin Kung Fu, through the sticky hands of Wing Chun Kung Fu, and, eventually, into the push hands of Wooden Tai Chi Chuan. And, even if the student stays within one art, he will evolve into the soft. The unfortunate fact of aging, of the body no longer being able to expel the tremendous force of some of the hard arts, will draw the student into the softer arts. He will punch so that he doesn't get whiplash, he will use his legs so he doesn't suffer hip injury, and he will become softer in his approach to the art. As these progressions of age and art occur, students learn to be softer, using their minds and their bodies to use less effort, and yet retain the abilities they have gained from the hard arts. Instead of violently thrusting energy through their bodies, they use the energy slowly, and focus it. Thus, the blinders slowly come off, and awareness seeps in. Instead of exploding energy brutally through their bodies, the students seep the energy through their bodies. They learn to guide this energy with their awareness, and the smallest of their motions contain ideas of energy. They learn that the crude body energy they used when they were young and robust was, unaware. Finally, they make the change from hard to soft, from inner to outer, from internal to external, and the Shaolin adept becomes the wooden sage. Instead of using violent art, the wooden master moves with an opponent, drawing in the energy of the attack and transforming as he wishes. Yet, though there is wisdom in the gung fu of the wooden variety, there is no disdain for the hard, for the true sage knows the need for his early Shaolin training, he knows the benefit of understanding energy on hard levels if the student is to make the transition to the softer wooden intelligence. Al Case has studied the martial arts for 40 plus years, he began his wooden training in 1974. You can see how soft he is by picking up a free ebook at Monster Martial Arts. Many hundreds of monks gained outstanding results and brought fame to martial arts of Shaolin forever. All of them attained such unusual abilities thanks to special secret practices traditionally called 72 Arts of Shaolin. They are the base and essence of the Shaolin combat training. 
Chronicles of the Shaolin Monastery, Shaolin CG, preserved for us many names of monks warriors from Shaolin who attained mystic heights of mastery and obtained superhuman abilities thanks to indefatigable training and diligent observance of true methods. For instance, monk Hong Wen who lived in the XIIIth century sat into the stance MA, put a stone slab weighing 50 kilograms on his head, stood a man on each knee and stayed so until a huge incense candle, as high as a man, half burned off. His disciple Zhu Yuan could dodge several spears thrown at him, broke stone slabs with his fist, knocked a hollow in a wall with his finger, ground pebbles into powder in his palms, handled all kinds of Shaolin weapons with skill. Monk Ji Yin who lived in the XVTH century came to Shaolin at the age of 16. He gained such a mastery that he could easily move a stone weighing 500 kilograms with a push of his leg, break trees with kick, drive piles into ground with his heel, knock down several people at once with a kick. Monk Xu Ran who lived in the XVIITH century perfectly mastered the art of light body, Qing Gong, jumped out of one pit into another, could jump up a wall or a high pole, and for it he was nicknamed Genuine Master of Gong Fu. His contemporary, Monk Xu Qing mastered the art of diamond finger, to perfection, with his finger he could pierce a wooden board as it were a straw mat and crush stones into sand with blows of his elbows. The XIXTH century also knew a lot of true masters. Monk Ji Wei gained outstanding success in exercises for hardness Ying Gong. He crushed huge stones with his elbow like with a diamond pestle and broke thick wooden beams with an arm blow. Besides, he was proficient in the art of golden bell, blows of a big iron hammer did not hurt him at all. Monk Hai Fa beat off arrows shot at him, was able of dodging spears pointed at him from a few sides. Besides, he mastered the method, a leg weighing 1000 jins, he could crush a stone with a trampling blow and kill a man with the iron fist. Monk Zhen Yu ran up a sheer wall of 3 meters high and mastered the art of light steps. His disciple Ru Bai achieved some success in hard art Ying Gong and additionally he perceived the Luohan's art Luohan Gong and could fight against several armed enemies in pitch darkness. Yin and Yang aspects of the 72 consummate and secret arts of the Shaolin Temple i.e. its secret fighting exercises or Kung's produce two categories, Yin, Ru soft internal energy training and Yang, Gang hard external power training, respectively, with the former considered superior overall. To facilitate comparisons and contrasts between hard and soft kung fu and to help readers to appreciate differences between the two categories, an example from each follows. Yin, Ru. The vermilion palm technique exemplifies the prolonged, arduous, hidden intensities frequently found in Shaolin internal, Yin, Kung Fu training. These are, typically, much less well-known than the training demands of its external counterparts. Further examples of Yin, Ru Shaolin, Kung's include. Quan Yin Palm. Iron Cloth Bag, Sack In. Finger Pointing Arts. Yang, Gang. Toad exercise, conversely, representing Shaolin external, Yang, Kung Fu embodies training demands which, although prodigious, will, I am sure, be more familiar to most readers. This second Shaolin secret art or Kung is more typical of external Yang Kung Fu. Further examples of Yang, Gang Shaolin Kungs include Windless or Bucket Lifting Arts Iron Bullock Arts and Stone Pointing Arts both yin and yang kungs tend to have separate and distinct levels of progress and attainment which all students need to pass through to achieve their goals. The full list of 72 Shaolin Temple secret fighting exercises or kungs also embodies a yin-yang balance reflecting this principle's importance. Internal and external. External yang kung fu is extremely physical, its internal yin counterpart is termed spiritual, as invisible, internal forces are involved moving mysteriously, unseen within us. Faith in teacher teachings is required in the latter case. Further, harder to measure internal progress takes longer to show and consequently more dedication and willpower are required to acquire the desired skills. Cultural issues also need taking into account before internal, external comparisons are made.
Kung Fu has been known and trusted for millennia in China and the Far East, where teachings are instantly and unquestioningly followed, according to The Way. Western student traditions differ involving proof or explanations before things are accepted. To the uninitiated, internal Kung Fu Qi training theory is harder to understand and demonstrating Qi's existence, scientifically, to beginners harder still, an existence automatically accepted in China. This may well be due to the West's comparatively short acquaintance with Kung Fu. More prolonged exposure to traditional authentic Chinese martial arts training should cause this resistance to disappear over time. Supporting evidence relating to Hama Gong, toad exercise applied in action is presented. However, the deadly delayed death touch of the vermilion palm technique means we have to turn to Chinese martial folk tales and film histories for evidence of the circumstances and effects of its use. The vermilion palm technique. This is perhaps the most deadly of all the 72 consummate and secret arts of the Shaolin Temple aka its secret fighting exercises or kungs. The vermilion palm is also one of the most difficult to acquire, demanding much from the student in terms of willpower, persistence and determination. The vermilion palm falls into the category of yin, ru internal energy training and is a specific exercise of the palm. Technical analysis. The technique has long been associated with dim mock or delayed death touch. Reputedly, if applied by a master, whilst no external evidence of any strike being made would be initially apparent, bright red palm marks would appear on the victim's body within three days and death would be inevitable, after no more than 10 to 15 days at most, brought about by internal organ damage. Also known as red cinnabar palm and plum blossom palm, the vermilion palm requires 15 years practice to acquire, plus a dedication never to abuse it. It should not be confused with black cinnabar palm as medical treatment can help those injured thus for the effects of the vermilion palm, there is no cure. Stage 1 Concentration and Qi Gathering Take a shallow open bowl or other similar container part filled with fine sand and place this on a table before you. Rub your hands constantly with the sand until exhausted and repeat this practice daily. When you can rub your hands together one foot away from the bowl and cause the sand to move and swirl, stage 1 is complete. Stage 2. Replace the fine sand in the bowl with coarse and repeat the exercise until similar results are obtained. Next use rough iron sand and grit in the same manner. Finally use small pieces of scrap iron until these respond similarly to your palm rubbing. At this point the art has been attained. Overall. Learning the vermilion palm makes one stronger and healthier overall, improving the functions of the five major internal organs. However, the qi directed to one's palms by the exercise causes damage to the internal organs of those they strike. This exercise is part of Shaolin, soft, internal kung fu training. Kung fu, toad exercise. Toad exercise aka, hama gong, uses weights as apparatus. This is the Shaolin Temple secret fighting exercise or Kung, most compatible with Western weightlifting and weight training methods. Strengthening and developing all parts of the body, Hama Gong relies purely on external physical strength, power training and effort for results, with the aid of key visualizations. Technical Analysis The wrist, arms, shoulder, back and abdomen are the first exercised body parts, using an upright stance. Next come the legs and thighs, requiring a horse stance ma bu, instead. Previously, circular stone weights and bamboo bars were used, the latter's inbuilt flexibility encouraging development of the kung. Nowadays, traditional metal bars collars and gym weights suffice. Method. Stage 1 Strength Development. Concentrating strength in the arms and wrist, students lift bar and weights overhead repeatedly, as above, until tired. Progress to the next stage when this can be performed easily. Stage 2 Transporting Strength Make fists with your hands and imagine you are gripping and lowering a heavy weight. You will feel strength flow into this area as you do and flow back up into your arms and shoulders when your grip is released. Rest, relax and then repeat this exercise. Next, perform the exercise using the chest, abdomen and other body parts in turn, as specified above. 
Regarding the legs and thighs, horse stance, ma bi yu, practice whilst holding the weights should come first. Holding, using visualization, imagining the weights are still being carried, before lowering this imaginary weight, should then follow. Appropriate use of visualization is essential to ensure transportation of strength to arms, shoulders, legs and thighs at this stage. Each time, perform the exercise once, rest, relax and repeat it again. Hama Gong, Toad Exercise in Application Late, lamented, honorable, longfist grandmaster Leong Fu, one, Chongchen, C. Zhou, style founder, from Ipoh, Malaysia, famously used huge natural stones of irregular size and weight to assist development of this and related, Kung's. C. Zhou Leong Fu was also three times undefeated world middleweight wrestling champion 1959-62, before retiring, undefeated, in 1963. An awesome testimony of such Kung's effectiveness, this is merely a partial picture of the strength, potency and versatility of Grandmaster Leong Fu and his teachings, too. Also a master of the internal arts, Leong Fu was unmistakable in his insistence of their superiority over their external equivalents and the necessity to acquire a balanced blend of both. Overall. Once Toad Arts, Hama Gong has been successfully achieved strength can be instantly transmitted, at will, to any of the body parts thus trained. Masters of this art are very difficult to attack as they can concentrate strength in any part or region, reinforcing this and preventing injury. Conclusions External Yang, hard, strength and power building Shaolin secret arts tend to be easier to acquire, although the requirements to do so are still daunting indeed, and progress tends to be more obvious, more easily measured and demonstrated. Moreover, the methodology involved tends to be easier to understand and the methods used more direct. Such kungs frequently lead to gains in physical power, strength and resilience. Some of the Shaolin Temple internal secret arts cause internal damage when applied, the vermilion palm being no one in this list. However, as in this example, they can also lead to improvements in various aspects of internal body functioning. In this case, improving the five major internal organs quality increases health and longevity of the practitioner. Internal organ failures are major causes of sickness and death. The study and acquisition of internal skills, always valued above their external counterparts, embraces both ability to cause and avoid such failures. The methodology involved in acquiring yin, ru kungs is more sophisticated, the methods used sometimes more indirect and learning times much more extensive. However, prolonged internal study may have transformational effects on individuals who discover profound inner truths. The 72 consummate secret arts of the Shaolin Temple are still little known in the West. Internal Kung Fu, in general, similarly neglected, is rated superior overall in China, Kung Fu's birthplace and the Far East. However, it is when Yin and Yang are in balance that optimum health and Kung Fu progress may be achieved. So, in Dragon Year 2012 try to increase your Shaolin internal Kung Fu knowledge and attainment levels, awaken your inner dragon, and help ensure balanced progress in your martial arts training. The Shaolin Temple in Henan Province, China, was founded by a humble Indian Buddhist monk called Batu around 495 BC. In 517 BC the Bodhidharma traveled from India to the Shaolin Temple, where he founded Chan Buddhism or what is more commonly known as Zen. The legend is that when he arrived at the temple, he discovered the monks were weak from practicing sitting meditation all day, so he conceived and taught them a series of internal and external exercises to increase their health, strength, and vitality. These later developed into what we now call Shaolin Kung Fu and Shaolin Qi Kai Gong. Throughout the history of the temple, there has been a steady stream of monks bringing the best skills from the Asian world, combining them with ancient Shaolin skills, and then refining these modified skills for optimal effectiveness. The Shaolin temple fighting techniques are not pages from a history book but are something that are as alive and relevant today as they were thousands of years ago. Bringing Shaolin martial arts to the West is another chapter in the Shaolin book, and as a 34th generation fighting disciple from the Shaolin temple, I continue with this tradition today. The Art of War In the Shaolin temple, as well as studying the art of meditation and qigong, we also study the art of war. 
Long before guns, tanks, and bombs were invented, Shaolin martial arts were used in war. The monks had to find ways to change their body from vulnerable flesh, blood, and sinew into powerful invincible weapons. Not just their legs, arms, torso, and head, but also their internal organs, and most importantly their mind. Mind equals heart equals mind equals heart. The Chinese character for mind is the same as it is for heart. In China we do not split them into two like you do in the West. Wherever your heart is so your mind will be. It is your heart or mind, which makes your world, everything comes from it. So when you train in the fighting arts, you must practice your heart at the same time as you practice your body. You need to understand yourself and be brutally honest. What are you good at? Improve this skill. What are you no good at? If you think you are good at everything then you don't know yourself. Only when you know your own strengths and weaknesses can you control yourself. Only when you know your own strengths and weaknesses can you then go on to study your opponent's strengths and weaknesses and ultimately control them. This is the way to win a fight. This is also the way to win a war. But in war we are fighting with an enemy, in martial arts we are fighting with our own ego and our own inner enemy. We come up against this enemy continually in our training, when we feel tired, impatient, lazy, or we lose faith in ourselves or what we are learning. We especially come up against this when we are a new student. Beginner's Mind The beginner's class is the most important level and one which we will keep coming back to all our martial arts life. We are about to build a house, we have a blueprint in our mind, but so this house doesn't come falling down, we need to have strong foundations. In the Shaolin Temple, we get up every morning at 5.30, and go for a run up the mountain. This is like putting money into a savings account. If we do not have the stamina then we will not be able to practice the skill. When we come back from the mountain, we practice 5 basic stances, 5 basic kicks and stretching. Learning martial arts is no different from learning maths or English, if we cannot add 2 plus 2 then we cannot progress to algebra, if we cannot read the alphabet then we can never read Shakespeare. This is the reason we study these very basic skills. Only when our body is getting stronger do we then start to learn some internal and external forms, and only when our master feels we are ready do we progress to studying fighting punches and kicks and then start to fight in the ring. The importance of Qi. We also practice body conditioning. I specialize in Shaolin Steel Jacket. The reason I specialize in Shaolin Steel Jacket is because I am small, not much taller than 5 feet 6 so when I fight, I have to go into my opponent, and they are nearly always taller and heavier than me, which, without my body conditioning skill, would give them an advantage over me. I know it is difficult for many Western people to believe in Qi. Science still has not found a way to prove or disprove it. Excluding the Western understanding of the body's anatomical system such as the nervous and respiratory system, within the human body there are a network of pathways which we call meridians, they carry qi throughout the body. They are like small rivers which when the body becomes stressed or ill become blocked. The Chinese believe in preventing illness rather than waiting for it to happen so we practice qi gong to keep a healthy flow of qi running through our bodies. Sometimes I think we look after our cars better than we look after ourselves. We don't wait for it to break down before we give it gasoline, water, oil, or take it to the garage for a checkup, so why do so many of us do that with our bodies? Body conditioning. If we only want to keep healthy, then we will continue to practice healthy forms of qi gong all our lives, but if we want to be fighters then we learn to master the qi and direct it into different parts of our body. The analogy I use is to compare it with the wheels on a car, they are useless without qi, air, but by pumping simple air into its tires the car is transformed from a vehicle with a powerful engine that can go nowhere to a vehicle with a powerful engine that can go everywhere. Body conditioning gives us the confidence to come up against our opponent even if he looks bigger or stronger than us. With the Shaolin steel jacket technique I put my chi into my back and my torso and then I am confident that I will be protected from blows. My back and torso is like steel. It is my armor. Planting the fighting seed. 
All of this training is the planting of the seed. You plant an apple seed you get an apple tree. We plant a fighter seed, this means we set our motivation, we want to become an excellent fighter. We train hard, this is the cultivation, and then, after years of training, we start to become the fighter we always wanted to be. The first fight. But usually when we first go to fight, we are disappointed in ourselves. Training and fighting are very different. We may be good at training but that doesn't make us good fighters. As Bruce Lee said, if you can't hit your target, then what does it mean? And in the beginning, you may find it hard to hit this target who is no longer a pad, a bag or a fellow sparring partner but a determined fighter who wants to win as much as you. Nothing can prepare you for your first fight. But if you have trained consistently then you will know you are strong. You know you did everything to be the best. Doesn't mean you will win but you will have the confidence to win. If you don't have confidence then you can never win. Are the Shaolin fighting skills for you? We all want to win. It feels good. But we must remember it is just a stopping point on the way, it is not our ultimate destination. And the Shaolin fighting skills are not a dream, and they are not a film, they are a life. So ask yourself, do you love the Shaolin martial arts? If you do then you must continue to train. Through hard training you will begin to understand that you are much more than you thought, through Qigong you will have health and energy, through meditation you will develop control over your mind. You will ultimately win the war over your ego. This is the highest martial arts of all, and one, which may take you many lifetimes to achieve.